Welcome back to the weekly ranking show. My name's Cam Williams, and with Wimbledon done and dusted, we have some changes to the rankings, but not in the way that we're used to seeing. Of course, there was no points awarded to the Wimbledon winners. So we've got players that have dropped down the rankings, even though they've won. But let's start with the results of last week. So we had Wimbledon, two events, obviously, one of the women, one of the men's. Let's start with the past results. Starting with the ladies, Wimbledon final, we had Rabakina taking out Jabur in the final. 3-6, 6-2, 6-2 6-2 to lift her first trophy. Of course, two first-time finalists. And it was a very fun final. And over on the men's side, we had Novak Djokovic defeating Nick Kyrgios in the final in four sets. 4-6, four, 6-3, six, 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 four, six, to lift another Wimbledon trophy. He's fourth in a row and he's 21st Grand Slam. But as I said, players weren't rewarded in the rankings. They were only penalized. So let's have a look at the women's rankings for this week. Let's talk about the WTA rankings first. We had Iga Svantec staying at number one despite her only making the third round. But... Wasn't penalized that badly, still way ahead in the rankings. But Ange de Burr, who made the final of Wimbledon, has dropped three spots because she's lost a lot of points from her quarterfinal last year and didn't get any points this year because of what happened with the Russians not playing and everything else. So she got penalized. She goes down to number five. Contivate goes up one spot to number two, with Zachary going up two spots to number three, and Badosa staying right in the middle there at number four, not moving. So some changes to the top five, despite the results going to the player that got penalized. So it's very weird to see the rankings like that. Sabalenka stays at number six, dropping a lot of points from last year's semi-final, but not enough to lose her spot. And another player who lost all their ranking points was Pliskova. She dropped down eight spots out of the top 10 completely, Last year's finalist, allowing Collins to go up to number seven, Pagula to go up to number eight, Muguruza to number nine, and Emma Raducanu is officially a top 10 player. She goes up to number 10 in the rankings due to Pliskova dropping out completely. So again, players that didn't get rewarded for this year's tournament, especially Rabakina, I mean, she didn't get any points for this tournament, unfortunately. And of course, Jabur, she dropped down big time. It's been crazy with the rankings for this week. Let's have a look at the race of the finals. And there's no change because, of course, no points were awarded. So Iga Svantec still the only player to qualify at this stage. With Jabur coming in second, Goff comes in third, Pagula in fourth, Zachary fifth, Kazakina in sixth, Badossa in seventh. We have Benchich at number eight, Kudamatova at number nine, and Daniel Collins rounds out the top ten. No one getting any points this week, so everybody stays the same as they were last week. Having a look at players that have gone up in the rankings, which has been very hard to find, but players that got rewarded, I guess because other players fell down. Coco Goff, she's at a career high ranking, number 11 in the world, mainly due to Pliskova falling out of the top ten, so she's got, I guess, a bonus Bonus, despite not getting any points for Wimbledon. And Anissa Mova, who had a good Wimbledon, she did get a boost in the rankings. Again, due to players dropping down ahead of her, she goes up to number 22 in the world, three spots higher than last week. Players that have dropped down the rankings outside the top 10, Kerber, last year's semi-finalist, she goes down 12 spots, number 31 in the world. And Tom Yanovich, despite doing exactly the same thing that she did last year and make the quarterfinals of Wimbledon, she dropped 27 spots to number 71 in the world. So again, a huge mess on the rankings this week due to the points not being rewarded to the players that earned them. Having a look at the ATP rankings this week, and it's just as weird as the women's. Medvedev, he stays at number one with Zverev coming in at number two. But Novak Djokovic, the winner of Wimbledon, drops four spots. I mean, can you believe that? He drops four spots down to number seven, making way for... Players below him to go up one spot with Rafa going into number three. City Pass goes up to number four. Rude up to number five. And Alcarez goes up to number six. Djokovic fitting in at number seven. The Wimbledon champion dropping four spots. It's actually, it's it's crazy to be able to say that. I don't think we'll ever be able to say that again unless they strip the points at another tournament in the future. But it's a weird situation. Rublev comes in at number eight. Alia Seam at number nine. And Yannick Sinner. He's gone up three spots into the top ten again due to players dropping down the rankings who lost points and didn't get points for this year. So Yannick Sinner gets rewarded. He's back in the top 10. Having a look at the race to the finals now and again, players haven't been rewarded points, so it stays the same. Rafa Nadal, he's at number one. He is very close to qualifying for the ATP finals. And had Wimbledon been worth points, he probably would have qualified. He's at number one. Sidney Bass comes in at number two with Alcarez at number three. Rude at number four. Zverev comes in at number five. Medvedev comes in at six with Oje Aliasim at seven. Rublev at 8, Fritz at 9, and Novak Djokovic, he slots in at number 10. He would have been at number 3 or 4 had the points been rewarded. So, very unlucky there for Djokovic. He still might qualify despite Wimbledon being worth nothing. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings, again, very hard to find, but some players that played well away from Wimbledon. So we have Nakashima, who played well at Wimbledon. He goes up 7 spots because players dropping down ahead of him. He goes into the top 50 for the first time, career high, ranking at number 49. So, 
he kind of got rewarded in a weird way for his fourth round. And Montero, he goes up 16 spots to a career high 73 because he won a challenger event during the second week of Wimbledon. So he got rewarded based on a challenger result and goes up a lot of rankings because all the points dropping ahead of him from Wimbledon, those players fell down while he got some points from that challenger. Having a look at the players that have dropped down in the rankings and it's two players that played well at Wimbledon last year. Berrettini, he drops down four spots to number 15, last year's finalist. Had Wimbledon been worth points, he still would have dropped down because remember, he had COVID before the event had to withdraw. And Shapovalov, he drops down seven spots to number 23 in the world because of last year's semi-final points dropping down. But again, he didn't have a great tournament either. So maybe these guys would have dropped down anyways because they didn't get to play or they had poor results and couldn't save those points that they had from last year. So there you have it. What a weird day for the rankings. Great day for Wimbledon. It was great fun. I had a great two weeks, but the rankings are an absolute mess without those points. Now, we are hearing that maybe they'll award the uh, the ATP and WTA finals race. They might give the points out for those two uh, tournaments, uh, two events, but we haven't heard anything officially yet. But on the world rankings, Novak Djokovic winning Wimbledon, dropping in the rankings. Anstra Burr getting to the final, dropping in the rankings. So weird. Let me know in the comments below, what is the weirdest part of this ranking system? Are you happy with it? I mean, surely no one's happy with it. Uh, by the way, Roger Federer is completely out of the rankings altogether. You can't find him in the rankings. He has no points. So he's going to have to start from scratch when he comes back. But again, let me know down in the comments below, what do you find about...